What's going on brothers? In today's video I'm going to be hitting some legs, starting off with squats, then some good mornings, and then some calf extensions. Now, I do train in a home gym, I don't normally train calves at all because I don't have a place to train them, uh, but I had a bit of a genius thought. I can just put my feet up on something elevated and do some extensions that way. So that's what I'm going to do for my legs. It's going to be a quick session, not too intense because I am actually quite sick, uh, but I am still going to train. You know, I don't really think that, just because you're ill, I don't think that that's a, a reason not to train. I think you can train through it. You just have to train smarter. For instance, I'm not going to go balls to the wall on um, trying to get a PB. Uh, but I also do want to hit legs. My legs feel good, recovered, ready to go. So I don't see why I'd wait two or three days to feel better just to hit some legs. You know? So that's what I'm going to do today. Legs. But it won't be a PB session or anything like that. Or at least I'm not planning on it being that. But we'll see. Maybe this session goes well and I start feeling better as I progress. And then if that is the case, I will definitely hit, like, hit the PB. If you heard me clicking there, that was just my knee. It's still something which I get as a consequence of my torn meniscus like a year and a half ago. But something I have noticed is that the more I train when it comes to legs, like the further into the session I get, the less the clicking happens until eventually it doesn't happen at all. So I just have to keep making sure that I'm warming up properly throughout the session, doing exercises such as knee circles like this, as I find that these are so beneficial. If you've got crunchy knees and your knees are clicking, doing some circles with them, such as this, so beneficial because it puts your knees in different positions and normally the clicking is just a release of air, really. Like you've got a build-up of fluid, a build-up of oxygen, a build-up of air, and then you click it, and it just is that, that's what the click is, it's still. So, yeah, it's just the, the release of the air. But, yeah, the knee circles really help. Uh, just did my first set. I'm gonna keep going up now on 20 kg intervals, get to 140, maybe just get like two or three reps on 140, we'll see. Uh, and then, depending on how I get on there, I'll do that for a few sets and then hit some, some hamstrings. So, check it. So those squats then were kind of pulses. I didn't come all the way up, that was intentional. I find that because I struggle the most with the pressure on my knees, if I can get my knees warmed up with some light squats to begin with, it always helps to relieve the pressure and get my knees warmed up and ready for the exercise. No, I'm not feeling it. I don't feel weak. It's because I feel sick. It's because I feel sick. I uh, too much food. Maybe I'll lower. Maybe I have to start lowering how much I'm eating because. I ate like two and a half hours ago and it just feels like food sitting here, you know? Yeah. 
How many sets did I say I was going to get? Two sets of five. I could just do ten sets of one. Get the same amount. Because I, like, that was hard, just doing that. 140. Yeah, I'll just do 10 sets of one. Yeah. Yeah, that's what I'll do. Cool. I'm pretty sure I've done six, which means this will be my seventh. I think so. Just watch the lows back. I've actually done 10. <laughs> good, that's good. Uh, I'm feeling better. As I'm getting more into it, I'm feeling better. And I think this really just goes to show that even if you feel sick, even if you don't feel mentally there, try anyway, try anyway. I wanted to get two sets of five reps on 140. After that first one, I almost threw up in my mouth and I knew that's not, that's not gonna happen. My body can't take the pressure right now because I'm eating too much food. But I've tried again. I, I've, I've reorganized the way I've, I've structured my session and I've gone with one rep for 10 sets. So I'm still getting the same amount of volume in. It's just perhaps taken me 30 minutes instead of 10 minutes. So it, it's taken a longer period of time, sure. But I've gotten the weight now. I've gotten the numbers. That's what... Ultimately, it's about ensuring that you reach your goal every session. If you set a goal for yourself and you actually can't achieve it, find a workaround. If you told yourself you're going to deadlift 200 kg for three reps and you can't get it doing conventional deadlifting, switch across to the sumo, just get it. Just get it. And if, and if you can't get that, change your exercise and get a different PB from a different angle, go for a PB on reps. If I, if I could not have deadlift, if I could not have squat 140 kg as I did, I would have simply switched across to good mornings and you bet your bottom dollar, I would have got, gotten the heaviest good mornings I've ever gotten in my life. It's, it's just about always hitting new PBs and pushing yourself to the limit every single session. And even if you have some sessions, as I have today, where you feel mentally spaced out, you feel sick, you feel tired or sore, whatever. It's just about pushing beyond that and continuing to try. Yeah, 
that's, that's what I think anyway. So anyway, squats are done. Now I'm going to be doing some good mornings. Uh, probably sit around 60 kg. I don't normally do good mornings, but they feel so good on my hamstrings. Like they are, for me, the ultimate hamstring exercise because they just pull that sucker right open. Uh, and, and I just love that feeling. So I might do two sets of those. I'll make sure there's some intense sets and then do some calf extensions. Yeah, let's go. You guys know me, I'm a cup of coffee. Make sure I stay energized. That final few sets of this session. Okay, I kind of fucked up my form on that last one. Girls, I fucked up my form on that last one. And unfortunately, I stopped tensing my lats, my hands slide out too far, and then I kind of lost the form. Uh, I still got it, the last three, but it was a bit. Bit weird. No, my hamstrings feel good. <laughs> so what I'm going to do now is take the weight off, take my legs nice and wide out here. I'm going to do the, I'm going to point my toes out as well, and do the exact same movement, but just kind of <sighs> focusing more on feeling the contraction in my hamstrings. Okay, for those of you who heard the screaming on the last video outside. I looked, it's just some teenagers. No need to panic. <laughs> so, what I'm going to do here is you can see I'm very wide, okay? It's very wide. I'm coming down as if it was a regular good morning, feeling the contraction in my hamstrings, squeezing my glutes to bring me back up. Bring myself down again, feeling the contraction, squeezing my glutes. Oh, it's intense. It's an intense feeling. You'll also feel it if you're a girl in your pelvic floor. But I looked at my audience and like 97% men, so. 
If you're the one girl who's watching, <laughs> you'll feel it in your pelvic floor. But if you're one of the broskies, you'll just feel it in your butt. <sighs> Maybe your crotch or your groin a bit as well. Uh, so remember, this isn't about lifting heavy weights at this point. This is about feeling the stretch down and out. Oh, yeah, it's a good feeling. And then bring yourself up by squeezing your glutes. Do you know what I'm saying? You squeeze your glutes. So you come down, you feel the stretch, embrace it, and then pull yourself up with your butt. Imagine you're going to squeeze your butt, make it nice and hard. The same feeling, but all you're doing now is using that to propel you upwards. Oh, it's getting a bit sore now, I might two more. Oh. Hamstrings, especially here, because as you're coming up and you're squeezing your glutes, it's like propelling you forward, beginning here, and then coming upwards. It's a good feeling though. I like it. Alright, let's do some calf extensions. This one might not be so exciting to watch, it's just calf extensions. Now, because of that many weights, I'm tending to do it single leg to ensure that there's still adequate weight being placed in the calf. Because obviously if I had like a Smith machine I could load that up or a leg press or one of those seated calf extensions but I don't so I tend to grab something and just get up on my tippy toes like that and then let the calf touch the floor sorry my heel touch the floor and push it again nine ten Lights are moving, it's hard for me to get a good contraction. So I use my deadlifting pads instead. My crush pads, sorry. So you can tell I don't train calves often because I don't really have a plan on how to approach them. I know how to target each of the three heads of the calf, but I don't have the facilities to do that. Calves are more of a small little accessory anyway, I don't really think. Thankfully, due to my genetics, I need to train them that often. Maybe Children screaming in the streets. That was dog fights, what the fuck? 
I live in the countryside. <laughs> At least I don't live in London. Too much crazy stuff goes on in London. person's calves so yeah for me it's just a, a genetic blessing I guess okay now that is the end of the video I've trained my legs not quite the session I wanted due to my sickness and, and I guess mental state you know because if I even if I felt sick normally I still feel mentally great so I can still push through it but yeah today I didn't and that's okay you got to see how I adapt my training to suit uh, my body and my health so, with that being said, I'm now going to draw the session to a close by wishing you guys a farewell. And with that, that's everything. So I'll see you all tomorrow. Adios.